Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Yes, we thank you for all the things that you've done, most holy. Even Dada and Zambi. Yahweh, Yahuwah. Sanini, Nanini. Hey, We thank you for all the things that you've done. We give you the glory and we give you the praise. You've brought us through so much. You've brought our ancestors through so much to the point where we are here even to this day. Yes, there's been so many things that we've endured that even our numbers, we shouldn't even have been here because uh, it was just so hideous and so vehement and so constant. Yet, yet we still be stubborn and we still accept in the ways of the heathen and those things that they do. We want to cleave unto our idols and cleave to our superstitions and our witchcrafts and our clairvoyance and all these other things that we cleave unto. Yes, because they're convenient and it's fast. Yet not knowing you are testing us each and every day, but oh, most holy Sanini Nainini, even Tata and Zami, we ask you to deal with our minds and our hearts, deal with the hearts and minds of those around us that are the children of Akobe. Deal with their minds that they might be saved and delivered even from this enemy that deceived them even to their own destruction. And we thank you for all things, even to this day, even that our enemies are defeated, but we don't want to be defeated with them. Yes. And we thank you and we praise you. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We thank God for all of you, those of you that have been with us from day one. We thank God for all of those of you that have been with us in the midst, in the middle. You've subscribed, you followed. Yeah, we thank God for you. And it's not in vain because you have learned that much more about the Most High. You learned that much more about his statutes, commandments, and judgments. And we thank God for those of you who have just joined. And we praise God for you. Yes, yes. And we pray that you have followed this journey. Yes, yes, and even you can go back into the archives, into the profile, and you can just start from the beginning and just start from the beginning and keep going up each day as you even looking and listening to the even our videos each day that are, they are put on air. And we thank God for you, you, and you. Yes, yes, many times we go through things, you know, our shadow banning and all kind of stuff but i it doesn't matter it doesn't matter god's word is going to get out anyway yes 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 we're in the book of enoch not enoch <laughs> oh that book was so good but anyway we're in the book of jubilees the book of jubilees called the little genesis or the little genesis yes yes we're in chapter one and it reads and it came to pass in the first year of the exodus of the children of israel out of egypt out of bondage in the third month on the 16th day of the month that means it was two months three months after the eight the month of abib which is about june july somewhere in there now on the 16th day of the month so it could have been the 16th of the month of whatever that third month is now god spake to moses saying come up to me on the mount and I will give thee two tables of stone of the law and of the commandment, which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. Yes, he wants them to teach. He wants Moses to teach. See, this, this is not Moses' law. This is God's law. Yes, it, it, there's laws. Even your, your, your uh, what do you call it, the Egyptians, uh, whatever, their little law they got, doesn't even compare to that. If you read them and compare them, even the Buddhist law sounds similar. Their law sounds similar. But don't let them fool you. This is just that B devil trying. He's using men. That's, all, that's what they all have used, men, to try to sway you from even Dada and Zambi, even Sanini Nainini, even Yahawa or Yahua, whatever you would call him in your language. Yes. He says, in the glory of the I am abode on Mount Sinai, and a cloud overshadowed it six days. And he called to Moses on the seventh day out of the midst of the clouds, and the appearance of the glory of the I am was like the flaming fire on top of the mount. And Moses was on the mount 40 days and 40 nights. And God taught him the earlier and the latter history of the division of all the days of the law and the testimony. And he said, Incline thy heart to every word which I shall speak to thee on this mount. And write them in a book in order that their generations may see how I 
have not forsaken them for all the evil which they have wrought in transgressing the covenant which I have established between me and thee for their generations this day on the Mount Sinai. Now, the evil, what is evil? When you do that which is contrary, when you wish that which is contrary, that a person, in other words, instead of blessing, you curse them. That's evil. Instead of healing a wound, you make the wound deeper. That's evil. Instead of wishing them good, you wish them that they, you know, not prosper. That's evil. Yes, <clears throat> that's evil. Now, he says, which I established between me and thee for their generations on Mount Sinai. In verse 6, he says, And thus it shall come to pass when all these things come upon them that they will recognize that I am more righteous than they in all their judgments. Yes, who is more righteous than he that have made or even is the righteousness? Who is right? Who is fair? See, many of you don't even understand love. Love is God. How is God not love even if he destroys people? Look at the word, look at how they describe love and think about the law, statutes, judgments, and even the ordinances of the Most High. He says, now, when all these things come upon them, they will recognize that I am more righteous than they in all their judgments and all their actions, and their, they will recognize that I have been truly with them. In other words, when God judges you, you are not going to have any excuse. When the elect one comes and he brings judgment to you because he have overcome the world. As an example that you should uncover, overcome the world. <clears throat> and not that he's God. No. The elect one is not God. But he's been elected as a judge unto man. And therefore, in order to judge man, he had to live the life of man. Yes, he had to live the life of man. And he died an example and rose an example to you of what should happen if you should endure even until the end of your days. Yes. <laughs> come on here. Now, he says now, thus it will come to pass when all these come upon them, they will recognize that I am more righteous than they. In verse 7, and do thou write for thyself all these words which I declare unto thee this day, for I know their rebellion and their stiff neck before I bring them into the land which I swear to their fathers, to Abram and to Isaac, Asaka, or to Jacobi or Jacob, as some of you say, unto their, your seed, which I will give a land flowing with milk and honey. Yes. And they will eat and be satisfied, and they will turn to strange gods, to gods which cannot deliver them from the art of their trouble or tribulation. And this witness shall be heard for a witness against them. In other words, what is the witness against them? The law. <laughs> did not Paul say, the law, I had not known that I sinned, and self, I, the law told me that I did this, that I was wrong. In other words, God's teaching you that you're wrong. Instead of just accusing you for no reason at all, he's showing you. And you say, what about the people that didn't receive the law? They had the law. They had the same law. They had the same law. It was just written different. It was just said different, but God culminated everything that he said to those people before the flood and before Israel. Even the Gentiles, having not the law, have a law unto themselves. See, come on here, else accusing or excusing each other. They're going to be judged. But now the law is through Jacob. The whole world already knows about this. And this witness shall be heard of for a witness against them. Now, see, you see how they come up with the Gospels now. For they will forget all my commandments. <laughs> yeah, you forget them because you thought with those incomplete laws, with those laws that you think Esau said and all those things. Uh, how in the world can you get to the point where you know they of old has said and now I say unto you, that's a red flag. Can't you understand this? Red? Some of you will, eyes will open right at this moment. Because you see this red flag now. How can Jesus or the elect one or the one sent by God even mock God in the fact that he says, you, he said that, but I'm telling you this. Huh? Red flag, red flag. No, 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 no. They put that there. The elect one did not say that. Thou shalt not commit adultery is what he said. He says, for they will forget my commandments, even all that I've commanded them, and they will walk after the Gentiles and after their uncleanness and after their shame and will serve other gods. And these will prove unto them an offense and a tribulation and an affliction and a snare. 
In other words, all the things that your ancestors have suffered. And some of you even suffer to this day. I mean the hangings and trees and all the mass murders that have happened to you, even all in the Congo, all up in, I mean, Kenya and all down through uh, Tanzania and all kind of places, so Sudan, all these genocides and all these things that have gone on throughout the years and the ages amongst your enemies. Are they not telling you? Is God not, did not tell you that these things would happen because of your disobedience and your stiff neckness? Come on here. He says, now, he says, many will perish and be taken captive and will fall into the hands of the enemy because they have forsaken my ordinances, my commandments, and my, the festivals of my covenant and my Sabbath and my holy place. And I have hollowed for myself in their midst and my tabernacle and my sanctuary, which I have hollowed for myself in the midst of the land. And it should be and I, that I should set my name upon it that it should dwell there. In other words, God meant for that thing to be perpetual, but with our, the, the way of our ancestors who want to be after the other gods, even they even chose a king, a man, when they had the, the I mean, the bona fide protection of the Most High. God was the watch of their borders. God was the watch. He was the, he was the military. He, he, the military didn't have to do but just blow their breath and the enemies fall down. But yay! Yeah, we were so foolish, our ancestors so foolish to the point they forsaken their own power, feared of every nation. During the reign of Solomon, God had demonstrated what could happen if we would walk holy before him. Yes, and they will make to themselves high places, groves and graven images, in verse 11, and they will worship each his own graven image so as to go astray as they will sacrifice their children to demons and to all the works of the era of their hearts. Where did these eras of the heart come from? Demons, devils. Even Abraham prayed in 12 and 20. He said, oh, help, help me, help me, that these demons do not sway my mind against you. He said, I, Abram, the father of a Kobe, prayed that his mind would not be swayed. Now, we know when these demons and devils and Satans are always taken, when they're taken away, a clarity of mind shall come to all men, whether you got a pineal gland or not. It's going to come. And I will send witnesses unto them, and that they I may witness against them, but they will not hear. They will slay the witnesses also, and they will persecute those who seek the law. In other words, those who want to learn the law, those who want to be a part of the law. Yes. You have prophets every day trying to tell you the law, even on the corners of your streets in the major cities. You have prophets all over the place, preachers or whatever you want to call them. They're telling you everything about the goodness of the mercy of the Most High and trying to teach you those things which the most, that pleases the Most High. But yet you take it as an offense because you have learned another way and not the way that was prescribed unto you. He says, now, they will abrogate and change everything so as to work evil before mine eyes. And that's what they did. Look at your New Testament. <laughs> There's no such thing as an Esus. But that's what they named them. That's even far from even the transliteration that even they say it is. What tra that's a transliterate lie. That's what it is. The fact is, your Yahawasha, your Yahusha, your Mesendisi, these things they have sublimated. This man in the book of Enoch was called the elect, the elect one, the anointed one, the one who shall judge all the earth. How can he judge all the earth if he had not lived the way a man have lived? He cannot do it. How can he prove to you that God would raise up you from the dead if he did not raise from the dead? Come on here. He don't contradict God. No, he don't. He does those things which he know that he was taught during his time with the Father after his creation. Now, he says, and I shall have my praise from them, and they shall deliver them to the hands of G Gentiles for captivity, for a prey, and for devouring, devouring. Kids fed to the gators. Ah, oh, you had those low-hanging fruits on the tree. Strange fruit. Then you had all the King Leopolds and all that who would 
take the lands that you would have and then massacre millions. Even to this day, millions are massacred because of what dwells in the ground of the precious ground and things that are under your feet. And you still want to go back to Egypt. <laughs> Come on here. It's going to be worse for you in this latter than it was in the former. Now, and they will forget all my law and my commandment and all my judgments and will go astray as to new moons and Sabbaths and festivals and jubilees and ordinances. In other words, they created their own. Yes, their Christmases and all these other things. Their New Year's and their Halloween's and all the other festivals that you pagans love. And after this, they will turn to me from amongst the Gentiles with all their heart and with all their souls and with all their strength. And I shall gather them from amongst all the Gentiles and they will seek me so that I shall be found of them when they seek me with all their heart and all their soul. And I shall disclose to them abounding peace with righteousness and I shall remove them the plant of uprightness. And with all my heart and with all my soul, they will be for a blessing and not for a curse. And they will be the head and not the tail. In other words, God's going to restore you back to your original state. He's giving you a glimpse during this reign of King Solomon. Now, he said, after you suffer a while, then the Lord shall what? Or the Most High, even Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Tata Nzambi, Sinini the I am that I am, the Heya, will restore you to your former as the head and not the tail. And put the tail down so low that that tail would wish that it was always the tail. Yes. He said, and I shall build my sanctuary in their midst and I shall dwell with them and I shall be their God and they will be my people in truth and in righteousness. And I shall not forsake them nor fail them for I am that I am their God. In other words, after you suffered a while. After you suffered a while for what? Not for God, but for your own sins. For your ancestors have made a co covenant with the Most High. And all that the Most High has said, that will we do. They agreed to it. And you best believe when you make a vow, it's best that you keep it before the Most High instead of getting rid of that vow. Now, and Moses fell on his face and prayed and said, oh, Tata and Zambi, my God, do not forsake thy people and thy heritage so that they should not wander in the ear of their heart and do not deliver them into the hands of their enemies of the Gentiles, lest they should rule over them and cause them to sin against thee. And let thy mercy, oh, Tata and Zambi, be lifted up upon thy people and create in them an upright spirit and lean, let not the spirit of Belial or Belair rule over them and cause them before thee to ensnare them from the path of righteousness so that they may perish from before thy face and many have perished before the face of the most high because they were stubborn and stiff necked and prefer those things which they see over the things that they did not see that they created the things that they see yes but they are the people in thy inheritance which thou hast delivered thy great power from the hands of the Egyptians. Now he's, he's pleading with God, just as when you when 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 Yahushai, Yahusha, went before the Most High and he pleaded for the children of Israel. But the fact was, he was the same as Moses. He pleaded. He, he tried to end oh, yo, you 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 glorify that. But there were red flags everywhere in that New Testament. I want you to look for those red flags according to as you understand the law, statutes and ordinance of the Most High. The elect one did not say a lot of the things they put down in there. Okay? Now, create in them a clean heart and a holy spirit and let them not be ensnared in their sins from henceforth to eternity. And with that, to the righteous I will say, peace.